It's the magic of math here, and today we're going to learn six steps to solve any linear equation. Here's our math question today. We're asked what value of x makes this equation true, and we have 7 multiplied by the quantity x subtract 2 is equal to 5x subtract 10, and we have four answer choices to pick from. So you have two choices here. You can hang on and listen to the six steps to solving the linear equation and pause at any time to solve on your own, or you could go for it and just try to solve this on your own and use the chapters to go to the solution to check your solution or follow my six easy steps. So here we go. We have our six steps to solving this equation. So when we talk, start talking about the six steps, our first step is going to be, if necessary, we're going to clear parentheses using this distributive property. This may or may not be necessary. Step two, we're going to, if necessary, combine like terms on either the left side or the right side. Step three, if necessary, we're going to collect variable terms to one side using inverse operations. Step four, if necessary, we're going to collect constant terms to the other side using inverse operations. So variables to one side, constant terms to the other. Step five, if necessary, we'll identify the coefficient of the variable term and use inverse opera operations to either divide or multiply by the reciprocal to solve for x. I put this in quotes because it might be a different variable, something other than x. Could be y, a, q, r, anything. And then our sixth and final step is going to be to check and evaluate the equation with our solution. This is probably the most important step because after you've done all of this work, you want to be sure that you've not made a mistake and then you know whether or not to go back and evaluate any of your own work. So we're going to begin solving this equation that was given to us using step one. Remember, all steps may or may not be necessary, except the last one, the final one is to check. So we're going to determine if it's necessary to clear the parentheses using the distributive property. I can see that I have parentheses here, so this is absolutely necessary. So we're going to take the seven, and we're going to clear the parentheses using the distributive property. So 7 multiplied by the variable x gives me 7x. Then 7 multiplied the term negative 2 is negative 14 and bring down equals 5x subtract 10. So we have now completed step 1. We've cleared the parentheses and we have an equivalent expression. Let's move on to step 2. If necessary, we need to combine like terms on either the left side or the right side. So I kind of think of this as cleaning house. So we're going to look at just the left side in isolation, and then we'll consider the right side. So we're talking about combining like terms on the left or the right side, and we can have a variable term, which has a variable, so a letter and possibly a number, and then constant term, which is just a number with no variable, so no letter. So on the left side, we can see we have one variable term and one constant term. So that's what we call in simplest form. You cannot combine this any further. So there are no like terms on the left side. Let's look at the right. So we have a variable term here, and we have a constant term, negative 10. So again, these are not like terms. We have one of each variable and constant term. So therefore, there's nothing to do here. And step two is not necessary. Moving on to step three. If necessary, collect variable terms to one side using inverse operations. So our whole goal is to get our x's on one side and our numbers on the other. So our algebra, our variable terms, and our constant terms in algebraic sense. So let's identify our variable terms, which is 7x on the left side and 5x on the right. So we want 5x to go over here. You could bring the 7x over to the right, but I'm going to move the variable to the left because this is the larger term, so I will avoid a negative sign. So to do that, we're going to use inverse operations, which means I need to create a zero pair. So the inverse or opposite of 5x is going to be to subtract 5x from each side. So 7x subtract 5x is 2x. Bring down our negative 14 constant, and that is going to equal 5x and negative 5x are a zero pair, leaving me just negative 10 on the right. So we're done step three. 
Let's move on to step four. If necessary, we want to collect constant terms to the other side, meaning we have our number values. So negative 14 and negative 10, we want to move negative 14 to the right so that we have our variable x here and then our number term, our constant on the right. So to do this, we're going to use inverse operations. So the inverse or opposite of negative 14 is add or positive 14. And what we do to one side, we must do to the other. So now let's combine 2x and our zero pair gives us 2x. Bring down our equal sign, negative 10 and 14 is positive 4. Step 4 is complete. Step 5, if necessary, identify the coefficient of the variable term and use inverse operations to either divide or multiply by the reciprocal to solve for x. So let's go identify our coefficient. Here is 2. 2 times x. So we have a variable term and 2 is the coefficient. So we are going to do the inverse. This is 2 multiplied by x. The inverse of multiply is to divide. So we're going to divide both sides by 2. Remembering whatever I do to one side of the equal sign, I must do to the other. So let's solve. 2 divided by 2 is 1 or 1x, one leaving me x equals and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So step 5 is complete and I have a solution of x equals 2. And I can see that that's one of my solutions here, but we're not going to forget to do step 6, which is to check. So we're going to evaluate the original equation with our identified solution. So we're going to take this value of 2 and we're going to bring it up and we're going to check our solution by plugging in 2 for x and 2 for x. So all the x's get replaced with 2. So let's rewrite this. So instead of x, we're going to do 2 subtract 2 and 5 times 2. So 2 subtract 2 is 0. So we're going to rewrite this to be 7 times the quantity of 0. 5 times 2 is 10 and subtract our 10. Now 7 times 0 is 0 and 10 subtract 10 is also 0 and it checks. So there we have our correct solution. Answer C, our solution is x is equal to 2. And there you have it. That's six easy steps to solving any linear equation. I thank you for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you come back soon and have a great day.